All right. So perfect. Hey guys, um, thank you very much for joining today. Um, it's great that you kind of take your time to um, share your use cases with us again. Again, so I know that we had a webinar um, where you shared that already, but nonetheless, we think that it's way better to have a, a video again in order to uh, share that with our customers, also uh, with some partners. So basically, anyone um, in the Click environment who's interested in seeing the solution. So it would be great if you could probably just discuss or share with us. Um, what you've built with our solution, also probably um, why you uh, chosen to go with our solution and also uh, basically just share the whole process with us. Was it easy to configure? Um, what are the advantages of using the solution against um, what you had before and stuff like that? So it would be great. Uh, Michael, I think you're going to do the, the intro and show the solution to us. It would be great if you could just share that with us. And probably you can just introduce yourself as well so that anyone who sees the recording knows um, who you are as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm uh, Michael Rowe. Um, I'm uh, the report manager at Wrightington Wignan Lee NHS Trust, um, based in uh, near Manchester in England. Um, so today I'm just going to give a quick demo of the um, our COVID-19 app, um, which we first developed um, about four weeks ago, and since then it's been uh, changing. Um, we've got more and more requests and it, it, it's um, changing all the time. Um, so when we first started it was um, it was more to track patient uh, statuses within the hospital um, and it refreshed about every 15 minutes uh, just to make sure that all our operational team have up to up to the minute kind of data. Um, so as I mentioned before um, I'll just start showing you the actual app. Um, so we, we start with the current LOS dashboard. So this was the first kind of iteration of the app. As you can see at the moment, there's, it's currently showing 259 current inpatients. Um, it gives a bit of a breakdown of how many, um, uh, how long staff um, patients have been in the hospital. Um, so you can see down here that there's 28 patients who have actually been in hospital longer than 21 days. Um, and there's a bit more information on here about delays and whether patients are medically fit to leave the hospital. Um, but I think the more pressing matter or the more, um, the bigger reason for us developing the app was to monitor the COVID situation. It's obviously escalated over the last few weeks. Um, so if I just take you on to the next dashboard. So this is the uh, COVID-19 dashboard. Um, it's obviously not the uh, prettiest of dashboards, but it gives a, a lot of useful information um, to help our clinicians and managers across the hospital um, to manage the situation. Uh, so the first part of the dashboard is showing how many confirmed cases that there have been in different areas of the hospital. So we've tried to split it into logical areas. So this top bit here is showing patients in critical care, and that's uh, a group of various different ICU and HDU wards. Um, this next section here is showing the confirmed case on suspected and positive wards, um, and then there's how many confirmed cases. So as you'd expect, there shouldn't be any confirmed cases on standard wards. And then this is more about the testing, and this is just telling the staff how many um, Patients have had swabs, but they're still not had the results come back yet. Um, On to this next section here is the capacity um, figures. So this is again uh, breaking the, the different wards down into different areas. So at the minute, this um, is telling us that we've got 12 uh, beds available at the moment. So there's 24 beds available in totality. And there's 12 uh, patients in those beds. So that's where we kind of get the empty beds figure. And this graphic here is showing you um, if we're reaching capacity. Um, this marker here is showing the 75% mark. And as a trust, what we've, we've done or put in place is an escalation plan so that when areas start to reach this amount here or they surpass it, um, you know, the they can open a new ward or they can move patients about or 
you know, whatever they need to do to create more capacity. Um, we're even um, sending um, patients over to a, a, another site uh, over in Wrightington from our, our Wigan site. Um, and then these down here are just showing the, um, the actual outcomes. Uh, so at the minute, this is showing that we've had 327 confirmed cases across the, uh, the, uh, the hospital. Um, this is how many patients have been discharged with um, um, having a, a positive test result. And this is how many patients have unfortunately uh, uh, died as a result of um, having COVID-19. Um, so if Mike, I just, just say... A, you're... Just a question Hello? from me. Um, yeah, could, sure. you, could you tell me who actually is working with that app? So are the doctors working with it or who is it in the hospital who, who kind yes. of looks at these, these figures? Yes, there's a range of different users. Um, I think up to the minute we've got about just over 100 users, um, but there's execs who are using the information. There's um, pe people who are staff members who are kind of um, the, the kind of um, been tasked with sending off situation reports from different public bodies. Um, so we've got um, NHS England and um, Public Health England, these um, sorts of bodies uh, are requesting information from us. So it's helping us to satisfy these uh, requirements. Perfect, thank you. Um, so if I just move on to another page. So this is something that we've recently added. Um, so this is showing us the, um, so obviously staff, staff sickness has become a bit of a, an issue, obviously, over the, um, the, the last few weeks. Um, so you can see here that we start off about 10%, 12% uh, of the staff were um, off sick with um, COVID-19 symptoms. And then gradually over time, these have started to fall, which is obviously a good sign. Um, so what we've done here is we've, uh, group, we've just split them out by uh, staff group. So um, the execs can see exactly, um, you know, which uh, areas are most concerned. Um, so if I just go on to the next page. Um, so this is the wards view. So this is kind of the groupings that I was talking about on the dashboard. I just click on to here. So you can see here how it's split it by the different groups. So at the minute we've got one, two, three, four, five, six um, different areas under um, critical care, uh, two wards under negative, uh, six under positives, and then all the rest are standard. Um, and then we've got suspected wards as well. But um, this is kind of like changing on a daily basis at the moment. Um, and one of the really good reasons why we've been able to use write is, be is we've been able to, um, rather than hard coding all this in the background, we've actually been able to set up something in write. I'll just go on to that. So this is a almost like a ward management uh, table. And what we've done is we've handed this, we've set it all up and then we've handed it all over to the um, operational team. They can see each individual ward. They can say whether they want it to be shown in the front end of the app. And then here they can actually say which kind of ward that they want. So they can change this at any time. So obviously I'm not going to be working um, overnight at I don't know, like about, say if they needed to make some changes at seven o'clock in the evening, then they wouldn't have to ring me to make any changes. All they need to do is just come into here and make the changes. Same with the beds here. Um, so say if, for whatever reason, the number of beds was reduced by two, they could just come in here and just put 15 beds in there. And then all they need to do is just click on that tick and then that just gets swept into the um, into the app. So does this also mean that you have implemented kind of a workflow here? 
So I'm especially pointing to the column should watch show in COVID-19 app. So this is a column where you can decide if you want to transfer some data to another application. Um, no, it's not so much um, going into a different application. It's just um, so when we look at these results here, although there's other <laughs> patients in the, the hospital, for example, um, in the maternity ward, it's not really necessary to show it in these numbers. So what the um, operational team can do is they can just exclude it so it doesn't actually come into those those numbers. So if I find the um, maternity ward, you can see here that that's um, changed to no. Mm -hmm. um, so it just means it won't be presented in the numbers just because it it's, ju it's just not really relevant in terms of the management of the hospital, if that makes sense. It does, definitely. Um, could you probably just jump back to the right section again, then I would just like sure. to ask the question as well. So um, what we normally offer in right as well is the possibility of adding new data to it. So then in the top, we will have a plus or a minus button where you could just add new data. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you also use or um, don't you use that for probably creating new wards or stations? Um, not so much because um, this data is actually coming from our his system. So if we wanted to add a new ward, which we have done, so like um, ICU and LDU, ICU recovery, these have all been um, added since we've developed the app. So we've got a script in the background that just um, this reloads every hour. All right, so every time if someone adds a new ward into your source system, mm -hmm. then this will be added here as well, right? Exactly. That's oh, okay, it. got it. Um, so it just gets added as, as like a, a bit of a default. So I'm assuming this one here is one that's been added and on oh no, it's, um, it's got the date. Um, no, there doesn't seem to be any examples. Um, but all that, that would happen is it get added to this list and then obviously the last updated uh, column wouldn't be filled in because obviously nobody's made any changes to it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, perfect. That looks great. How how was the whole setup for you doing this app or basically using Write within this app? Was it hard to configure it or was it pretty easy to do so? No, it was really, uh, really straightforward and really easy to do, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, which is obviously when you're under a lot of stress to try and make, um, you know, to um, provide information uh, to people. You know, it's good to know that it's just so, so simple to set it up. I mean, if we, I think the only alternative that we, we could have gone down was to try and use something like Excel. Um, but I think it would have just been a total um, admin nightmare, to be honest with you. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, because, I don't know, I think just trying to track all the different changes and everything, so just having uh, right has been absolutely essential for us, really. Was um, was Excel actually something that you've been using before, or how did you do the whole process before this crisis and probably before having this app and this possibility? Um, we, we did use a, another right back um, uh, company, um, but I think... I mean, it, it was okay, um, but since moving to right, I think it, it has been um, a lot easier to use. Um, I mean, just to give you give you you know some of your, your potential clients a bit of an idea when we're setting this up. Um, you know, there's no actual SQL requirement in the background or anything like that. All you you literally do is just go on to the WMC. Uh, which stands for Right Management Console, I think. Um, Correct, yes. And, and there's just, um, they, they call them endpoints, and you just literally go into there and um, you just kind of build your table from there. So it's just all done in a, a nice, easy to use GUI. Um, you put all your details in, you just um, press confirm, and then that does all the work for you in the background. So it's not as if you need to go off into SQL, create an, a table, and then try and link it all up. Um, all the hard work's done for you, really, um, which obviously makes my life a, a lot easier. I can imagine. Thanks for your feedback here. That's great. Good to hear. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Um,
So, so in total, what do you think, how long did it take to you to get up and running with write? So creating your first endpoint and saving the data of this endpoint into the database. How long did this take of implementation process? Um, obviously, it, it gets a lot quicker once, you know, um, when you do your first one, it, it, you know, you're a bit, you stumble for it a tiny little bit. Um, but then uh, uh, when you get used to the actual um you know the interface and it's you can do it really quickly i bet this probably took about a half an hour to set up um so yeah it's, it's really easy cool thank you that's cool are there any other objects where you use write as well or are there any objects planned or apps planned where you use write or is there anything in your mind uh, where you could use it in the future as well yes yeah, so in terms of the actual covid app um we we have two more examples and um, so as i was talking about before um, one of the pages that we've got is um to do with staff uh, sickness um so at the moment i mean it would have been great if we could have just set everything up from our um our staff system uh, but you know it's sometimes in the real world it's just not feasible uh, so what we've been able to do is just set up um, a manual input form. Um, so our HR team has access to this tape, um, this application, and then each day they just come in and they just put in the numbers for us, and then they just put the numbers in, um, and then obviously when the app refreshes, um, just go back to the page, um, those numbers just pull through into here. Um, so that's one one example where we've we've been using it. Um, another example, quite sadly, is um, we've had to set up a mortuary cap capacity app as well. Um, again, we we didn't really have a system in place that we could use. So just to make things a bit quick quicker for us to start presenting information, uh, we set up this um, app here. Um, so it's it's actually quite simple. We've just got the dates here of the person who's entering it, um, and then there's different areas within the mortuary. Um, so depending on what area, it has a, a slightly different number of beds available, um, and then they just keep putting the figures in. Um, we've not actually pulled this into the front end of the app yet, um, but you know it's this is something that we'll we'll be working on. Cool, perfect. Thanks for sharing. Okay. That's great. Yeah, it's really great to see that kind of the solution, which is actually a very easy solution, right? We allow inputting data into ClickSense. Mm -hmm. uh, can be very helpful here to also kind of build the dashboards and the app that you've got right now. So yeah. we're glad to see that and uh, we're glad that you're working with it. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, I mean, some of these, uh, these pages aren't really relevant. Um, you know, it's just kind of cutting the data in a slightly different way. Um, so this is something to, um, so we have to say, if patients are delayed from being discharged, we have to kind of report um, to NHS England. Uh, so that's kind of what, what this page is for here. And um, this other page here is kind of similar to that. Well, these are just the different reasons. Um, and then we've got, um, patient lists as well so we go right down to the bottom in this particular app and um, can't really show you that because there's um, obviously patient identifying yeah data. sure no worries um, but yeah that's the yeah, um, that's basically the app so I don't know if you've got any more questions. That's cool. Uh, so for me it's fine I think um, well, I think we've got probably 20 minutes already and I think it was just great for us and also for everyone who's interested to see what you're doing with it. If there are any questions, I think that everyone will probably reach out to us and uh, we are in touch anyway. So um, then, of course, all these questions um, will be answered afterwards. But it was really great to see an overview of what you did with it and also um, to hear kind of you saying that it was really easy to configure and stuff like that, because I think especially in Companies like uh, the one you're working for, it's very um, helpful to have a solution that is easy to configure and that, of course, also works fine without any troubles, performance issues and stuff like that. So thank you very much for sharing, guys. And um, yeah, we're happy to share that with all our contacts as well. OK, you're very welcome.
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. 